Good morning. All right. Uh, this talk is going to be a little bit less technical, a little more on the, um, the platform and the computer science side and not quite as uh, deep into the biology. Um, so, but I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, reproducibility, uh, computational reproducibility, and specifically how Arvados um, <coughs> sort of helps with that. And um, as said, I'm a developer on Arvados and employee of Server. So, computational reproducibility, well, reproducibility in general is based on scientific method. That should not be a controversial <coughs> statement. But there's a lot of inter in, uh, uh, incidental complexity in uh, reproducibility where somebody writes some code, it depends on a bunch of libraries, a bunch of really specific uh, configuration of their environment, and then the grad student, graduate student leaves, uh, moves on, and now nobody knows how to run his code. Um, you know, you need, or you did a lot of data massaging in the process of developing your analysis, but now you don't quite remember everything you did. And so it makes it really hard for third parties to, uh, to uh, confirm your results or to, to collaborate between institutions because of all this, again, incidental complexity, um, or just for to spread uh, best practices technique. Somebody might come up with something really cool, but I can't use it because it's just too complicated to install all the specific versions of software that are needed. So, you know, how can we, um, how can we sort of help with that problem? So a um, little bit about Arv Arvados, for those of you who might not be familiar. Uh, it's a computational platform for managing and processing data at scale. So for managing the compute and storage cluster, it is uh, free software. So you can download it, install it, try it out yourself. Um, but it's also uh, commercially supported by servers. So, uh, so there's two major components to Arvados. There's uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is the storage system, uh, content addressable storage system called Sheet. So, the what uh, when I say content addressing, what this means is that the data is it stored in the system rather than being assigned sort of arbitrary file names, arbitrary database identifiers. These addresses are uh, com the address that you use to refer reference a block is used is comes from a checksum or a hash code from some standardized hashing algorithm. And so this gives you an identifier that is um, inherently, uh, an inherent property of that data. And so this means that these identifiers are referring to immutable data. Or these, ref these, these identifiers are immutable because if the underlying data changes, that identifier is no longer associated with that data. Uh, this also has the properties of being self-certifying, which means that when data is retrieved from the system, because you can run uh, your checksumming and hashing algorithm on it, you can validate that the data that you received is in fact the data that is, should be associated with that identifier. So if there's corruption or just mistakes that happen in the handling, that can be detected automatically. Uh, third advantage of this is it makes it much easier to do versioning. So again, because the identifier, when the content of the data changes, uh, you now have a new identifier. You can now send, uh, associate versions with every uh, every, every uh, identifier can be is associated with a different version of the data. Um, now, in because it's a distributed file system, uh, when we inge to ingest data, we take the input files. These get split into blocks of up to 64 megabytes. We compute the hash uh, code on each of these blocks. And then these are sent out to a distributed uh, storage system, so across a cluster of storage nodes, uh, may be replicated several times. And then a manifest is recorded in a database, which tells you how to reconstruct your set of files uh, by associating uh, blocks, segments of those blocks, with the original file names. So then when you want to read data back out, you just uh, get the manifest, you find the files that you want, those, those, that tells you which blocks you, it is that you need, you can, and you fetch those blocks and you get your data. And the manifests themselves are in a standard format which is also hashed and content addressed. So the, you use the unique uh, content address of the manifest, uniquely identifies a set of files and the, those, the contents of those files. And uh, the third advantage of this is you can also 
very cheaply reorganize files or create sort of zero overhead copies. You can uh, create additional manifests with files reorganized or renamed that reference the existing data, again, by content and not by not having to copy your data around just to make sure that nobody changes it. Because you have a guarantee that it won't change because it can't. The identifier uniquely identifies your data. So the second component of this is the computation platform. So as I just talked about, Heap, it provides sort of a version control for your data. So there are two other major pieces of this for version control. Uh, Git, which I'm sure everybody here, almost everybody here should be familiar with, uh, which gives you version control for your source code. And the third part is Docker, which you'll also probably, you'll probably be hearing a lot about in the next couple of days, which gives you version control for the rest of your environment. And by putting these three things together, we are able to control the input data to your computational process. We are able to control what code it was that went into your process, and we're able to also <coughs> describe the rest of the environment that that, ran, that, that uh, analysis ran in. So as a result, you get a very good confidence that if you need to rerun some computation, that you have the same data, the same code, and the same runtime environment. And so these are all recorded, stored in a database, and kept there forever. The other uh, second advantage of this architecture is that we can now move computations around between different instances of Avatus. So using a single command called rcopy, we can copy a, com a com complete compute pipeline with many stages, copy all of the input files, Git repositories, <coughs> Docker images, and any other metadata associated with your computation to another instance, whether it's from an on-premise cluster into the cloud or onto a workstation. And once it's all copied onto your, new, your target system, it's just one click to rerun it. And again, using this, the content addresses, it is also very easy to validate that when you've brought it into the new environment, you're getting the same result. Because again, all of the input <coughs> data, uh, codes, and environment are the same and all of the output files are also identified, stored in heaps and identified by content hashes and so you just need to compare these content hashes to see whether you got bit for bit identical results. So of course reproducibility is also about collaboration and sharing so Arvados provides features for sharing your data, sharing your repositories, pipelines, Docker images, <coughs> things like that. So users in the system can set up groups, uh, share with just the general anonymous public, and uh, use that to collaborate, whether it's read-only sharing or read-write, whether within a lab. And so that really enab that enables uh, you know, better collaboration because uh, we have a good description of sort of compute environment that everyone that is being used to run these computations. So this allows you to uh, you know, run a pipeline shared by another user on your own data, or you can take some shared data, a public repository such as um, the Harvard Personal Genome Projects, you can use, or the Thousand Genomes data sets, you can use these data sets on your own analyses and bring your pipeline to the data where they're, uh, instead of having to download terabytes and terabytes of data to run it locally and then again have a hard time reproducing that analysis somewhere else. So, you know, we really take reproducibility seriously. So another thing, so what the next generation of this is uh, the common workflow language. So we've been heavily involved in developing a cross-vendor standard for describing computational pipelines, describing the, uh, the runtime environment for pipelines. And um, our vision is to ha have a cloud-based app store where uh, the, you, know, you have many uh, analysis tools available to you that have been developed by others. Maybe a lot of optimization performance has gone into it. And again, you can bring your own data and run tools developed by others without having to do a lot of fiddling with your cluster configuration. And to learn more about the common workflow language, come back at two o'clock when Michael Kusko will be giving a, a full 15 minute talk on that. 
And uh, with that, I will take questions. Thank you.